click some buttons and make some transitions. Oh, I gotta make sure this is in full screen. Good evening, everyone. Um, you should be you should be hearing me. We should be live. There we go. I'm seeing it on my side screen, just checking that the volumes are working. The volumes is. I don't think the volumes is working. Oh yeah, now I hear it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I can hear it. All right. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So welcome to uh, Cybershock, everyone. Uh, I am Hamish Cameron, aka Peregrine Kiwi. Um, this is my my Twitch channel. Uh, and next to me is uh, next to me virtually uh, Fraser Simons and uh, Kara Megaran. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm incensed though, and we'll discuss why. Later. Incensed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Kara? Are you incensed? I am uh, sensated. Sensed? Watched, yeah, I watched the finale last night, and oh, I damn. both love and uh, well shot orgies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Good. Okay. Really let's that. maybe yeah. let's put a let's put a mark in that to discuss that like <laughs> yeah. next week or next time we Side next track. time we do this. Yeah. <laughs> or let's just completely <laughs> scrap our plan. To, no, let's uh, let's yeah. give people because I have a particular comment to make about the end of that, and I want to give everybody more chance to see it. <laughs> so if you yeah. haven't seen Sense Eight yet, any of it or all of it, then go watch it all because it's the best thing yeah. that won't be on Netflix anymore. I mean, it'll yeah. be on there, but well, it'll be there forever. But <laughs> just that they won't be ma Not making any more yeah. of the very expensive but very good show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So go watch that. We'll talk about that in the future. Um, yeah, but tonight we are going to talk about Cyberpunk 2077, the game that everybody is talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, several lengthy and very good Twitter um, threads today from several people, many people. Um, lots of discussion, uh, all about the trailer video uh, and some dev comments. And we'll start by talking about the trailer video. Um, so where do we want to start with that you guys um i don't know why don't you come up with a thing that you want to talk <laughs> about first and then we'll just jump from point to point yeah okay so i i kind of wrote down like three little things that i thought about uh the trailer that i thought were worth um worth discussing um we'll start with i think i i love how faithful it is to cyberpunk 2020 um especially with all the call outs to uh various in-game fictional things uh corporations mostly arasaka and militech and the johnny silverhand stuff um if you want to really in-depth dive into that there are some other youtubes around uh youtube videos around we're not really gonna do that kind of thing um but i i think it really shows how well that um Mike Pondsmith is engaged with the process. Uh, and I think that is mostly a good thing, although there are perhaps some things about that that are not so good. Um, I like yeah. that it's all in the, in the daylight as well. Like I dig that. Yeah, that's what was gonna be one of my things, like bringing the dirt and the grime out into the daylight instead of the like typical <laughs> raid with the umbrellas and mm -hmm. all that was really cool. The only thing that bugs me about it a little bit is that it might be typical cyberpunk and that it doesn't address climate effects and changes which is like a glaring thing that they never tend to do <laughs> yeah so you've just read through cyberpunk 2020 again for your veil 2020 thing that you're doing fraser um mm -hmm. where is night city exactly does the book say uh i think it did say but i don't a, i don't recall i think it's imaginary west coast la it is but it's in northern california and it's set on some bay so i'm wondering if it's like a climate changed like imaginary new east bay i'm thinking of um there's a have you have you guys read the years of rice and salt no where there's uh it posits a situation in which all of europe is basically wiped out by the black black plague um, and so Europe is colonized by, or the abandoned ruins of Europe are colonized by um, Islamic civilizations from the Middle East. Um, and then America is eventually colonized by um, Islamic powers from Europe and Asian powers from um, Asia, right? And then they 
in a less destructive way than the European colonization was. Um, so that in the, the final state of it, there's this kind of like three state system in America, I guess, with the native peoples also occupying significant political power. But anyway, the thing that makes me think about that is the way that they described the West Coast and the big, I forget whether it's Chinese or Japanese city that's built in California, makes it sound to me like the entire Central Valley has been flooded. And I was wondering if that was a similar thing to Night City. Because well, setting the city in the nor- in Northern California as well, but having it be look so Southern Californian makes me think there's a there's a climate change thing going on. Uh, it could be. That'd be nice. In the source book, I just pulled it up. It says that it gives it uh, one of the most pleasant climates in the Western United States in Northern California. Mid 80s to low 50s temperature. Blah blah blah. Rainfall is usually about 21 inches per year. Mm. It and just sounds average kind of... 35 percent contains acid toxicity factor <laughs> yeah. higher than yeah. current government standards stats that sounds <laughs> like los angeles to me like i would kind of describe i mean maybe a little cooler maybe like santa barbara yeah know. it brings up one of the other points actually that i was that really struck me about the video and this has also occurred a lot in um adam Cobol's uh watch through there are a ton of cowboys like, and I'm super curious whether that's just, uh, we are a dev team from Poland and this is what we think California looks okay. like, or yeah. whether there's actually some sort of plot reason for all of those cowboys. And that could also play into the, is it climate change or is it just like palm trees everywhere? Because that's what this European company thinks is native to California, Southern California. And spoiler yeah. alert, they're not. It would be weird too, because like, if it is part of a plot device, and it's like angry Texans or something. That's also some like ethnocentrism going on too, right? <laughs> they're just yeah. like, oh, the angry Texans. They're they're in North Carolina, uh, California, and they're ready to fuck shit up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> speaking of speaking of cowboys, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. A rose was that they showed off a lot of gangsta lifestyle just i think it's super cool like street lifestyle here's all the gangsters and the people on the street uh doing their cyber street thing um but i found that fashion was really boring it reminded me of like a bumped up version of uh grand theft auto basically it was like not i didn't think it was uh the style i I felt like it was lacking actually the cyberpunk 2020 Hmm. style i didn't see the chrome uh look you know or the um an approximation of a of a newer an updated version of a chrome neon look basically they definitely had a throwback to it with the runway model though right that was from the chrome oh, yeah. compilation one or two or whatever it yeah. was like that yeah the woman with the yeah, the, the mohawk grass or whatever yeah the mohawk yeah. exactly right that was a yeah yeah also yeah. i like that mohawk was definitely a style <laughs> like yeah it's like when you watch the expanse and it's like half the characters have mohawks and it's mm-hmm. like oh that was a style it was on their style board like mohawk <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like that yeah. part that part was cool uh i, don't, I was just kind of uh, i didn't i didn't really like i was disappointed in the style and i saw um uh william gibson tweeted that too he was like like i said <laughs> yeah. that and then i saw i saw william gibson tweet almost the same exact thing that i said and i was like Whoa, hold too close to William Gibson, number one. <laughs> Are you actually <laughs> William Gibson? I know. <laughs> and then number two, like, is my opinion outdated because William Gibson's old, but he's pretty plugged in. And then number three, like, uh, I saw some people really criticizing his opinion. Um, so yeah. I, it was very, very complicated. I, 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 so have you guys seen, you, you've seen Remember Me, the video game that takes place in Paris? I haven't actually. Yeah. It's like the cyberpunk video game that takes yeah. place in Paris and it has a lady main character. Um, and it is mostly during the daytime. The style, the architecture is, is fucking amazing and the style is beautiful and gorgeous. And I was just like, I, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I didn't expect them to do better than that necessarily, but I couldn't help thinking about it when people mm-hmm. were talking about the style and what would yeah. be like a cool, innovative cyberpunk 2020 style. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I've interestingly what i've heard 77 sorry i said 2020. <laughs> <laughs> what, what year is cyberpunk again? <laughs> uh, some year yeah the uh the interesting thing about that is that um from what i have heard and read of the actual demo people say it's nothing 
basically like what the trailer is. So it's an interesting, it's interesting to me that they would like the style like, is not the same. Yeah, like also Walker on Waypoint, he was just like forget the trailer basically. Mm. Like this is like it, in gameplay, it's very much more like Cyberpunk 2020 than what huh. that trailer is mm. showing. But uh, so it's interesting to me that they would go for like a lighter more happy trailer type thing that did kind of feel GTA-ish if the gameplay is going to be so um, they they kept using words like visceral and wrong and stuff like that right oh, Where it's... I don't I guess like it wasn't I, I guess it was like the, like you know how GTA is it just looks kind of generic like yeah. there's, I don't know there's something like very like hmm. generic about the style like it's it's very like street clothes generic street clothes and like it could be like in a zombie game now or it could be in like any kind of game like the style which isn't very like it's distinct for gta but like i feel like that style colored many of the games that came after it right and so that's yeah. like a, an easy go-to like we need generic street style we should look at G gta hmm. and so 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 yeah i just thought that the cyberpunk street style might be cooler so is that yeah. where the gta comment comes from you think the style or the, or the like the palette of the, the video style, kind of things the style the fact that the main character seems to be a driver um the when you see a lot of the criminals doing criminally things it looks like the things that you do in gta like beating someone up on the side of a street and mm. uh there are a few other things like that i can't quite remember where it was like maybe like a room full of people shooting guns and like yeah uh, there's like a drive-by thing or something yeah, yeah. And I, th I think that's i think it's a combination of things that makes me think of gta which that's is i like driving games i mean mm -hmm. i like driver main characters even if that's not the focus of the game too i mean that's totally fine i, th I think it was just easy to point to all of those things and like uh, aesthetically and see a connection because I definitely saw all those comments. I saw your comment and a couple of other people basically saying the same thing and William Gibson, obviously. And I, I, yeah. it made me think, like, what exactly is it about it that's making it seem like GTA? Because it didn't necessarily seem like GTA for, to me. And that's yeah. probably because I didn't get a sense of what the game was about from the trailer. I didn't really get a clear sense of what you were doing. We kind of had this, yeah. like, this, like, voiceover from the guy that I've just described as annoying Budweiser guy who just sounds like a Budweiser <laughs> commercial like whatever I hope the other voice acting of the female character is better because I do not want to listen to him for a game um yeah. but I'm I glad there's a lady character too yeah no that's that's super good that was one of the, the and and customization of the characters that all sounds yeah. cool um I was worried I was worried yeah yeah but I I didn't get a sense of what you as that character would be doing um yeah I did a little bit. I, I mean, I guess you might be driving because you get into a car and drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like, yeah. there's like a boxing side quest where you like learn how to fight in under underground clubs. Or well, something maybe. And raise your fighting skills. I mean, probably. And then like, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's there were there were like a few key things and like like obviously mm. you were going to negotiate probably in offices. You know, you were maybe gonna have like little little NPC encounters on a train. Like I, I don't know, mm. those things kind of gave me clues. Interesting. Maybe yeah. to the gameplay. Although it could have been complete, Austin Walker says it's totally different. So yeah. maybe all of that was, you know. Well, I could also just, see just that trailer. Just that trailer. I mean, based on what Austin and uh, others have said about the gameplay, I wouldn't rule out it being basically GTA like because what they described could well be a kind of like somewhat scripted sure. mission inside a GTA environment. So yeah. it's possible. I just wasn't sure what exactly was was. Um, triggering people to that but that's interesting that you said that about the boxing match because i never do those things in gta i never go to that place to do the training with the dude but then now that you say it i'm like oh yeah that's totally a thing you can do in those games yeah, yeah. and like in the trailer for the fourth or the fifth one it was literally that where like the, yeah the immigrant guy was coming into the city giving the mm -hmm. voiceover saying about okay. like his little life story and they was showing snippets of the city and right. some driving and shit and i was like oh okay like yeah it just is very evocative of that trailer and they did the same yeah. thing with that trailer that they're doing with this game and that like it came out two or three years before it actually released mm. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah like it okay. yeah it was the same thing it didn't really tell you like mm -hmm. what you would be doing if it was gonna be like old gta or new gta or whatever it was just like it was an immigrant story and similarly people were like 
I hope they handle that well, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, yeah. that's why it was evocative for me. I literally said the same thing too. I was like, oh, yeah. it's like GTA looking. <laughs> yeah, I guess I've yeah. never actually seen a trailer. Oh, maybe I have seen a trailer for GTA San Andreas. I forget. Yeah. I mean, it's not. A, it's not a genre of trailer that I'm particularly familiar with. I yeah. would say. <laughs> I haven't either. I, I don't know why. It was a billion things that made me think that. But, and it wouldn't be bad if it was like GTA. I think that mm -hmm. might be fun. No, I'd play it. I'd play it. Uh, I, I was just sad that the aesthetic was kind of like GTA. Sure. Yeah. And the, uh, um, you know, I mean, cyberpunk drivers are like trendy now, right? Like all the, a lot of cyberpunk movies coming out mm -hmm. are driver related. And that, yeah. that character, like with that jacket and that car could be yeah. like, Ryan Gosling in yeah. Drive, yeah. which yeah. I'm down with. I mean, and that's cool. could they get Ryan Gosling through the voiceover instead of that guy? That'd be cool. Even, well, even better is that character. He never talks. <laughs> yeah. Burn, you hate the announcer. I do. It's just, it's just so. Oh, I just not like it. <laughs> it was like, please shut up. And he definitely yeah. sounds like a fuck boy in that trailer. Because right? I, I, I generally liked the aesthetic and I liked the look of it. I was really excited to hear Austin say that the environment when you're in it is super dense i guess the caveat there is that they didn't actually get to play it i think one of the devs or somebody like from cd project red was actually playing the game mm -hmm. um and they were all watching um which maybe speaks to where they are in the development cycle but i don't really know about that they haven't announced a date so who knows yeah and yeah, yeah. my my like like hopes rose a lot when i listened to that because he was saying like all the characters and stuff they're dead on for like cyberpunk 2020 characters where they're mm -hmm. like all style and stuff like that so hopefully the aesthetic does emerge from it and yeah. uh it's they said like it was kind of like a deus exy interface thing where you could kind of like interact with a lot of different things that you could see mm -hmm. and kind of get like lore about the world if you wanted to uh, but then the characterization was like way better and that the uh, what the game actually looked like even in this demo blew away like, whatever yeah. visually that they saw it was amazing and like Austin was saying how it's like the next gen within this generation like what you thought next generation Xbox as a game it would look like even though it doesn't it looks like the previous generation mm -hmm. they're saying that like the way that you play this game feels like a new way to play a game, whatever that is. And part of it was the density of the yeah. the stuff that Hamish was talking about. It's yeah. like a lived in world. So I think yeah. most of my excitement from the game came to listening to that to Austin and uh who who else was in that? Was it Patrick that was with him? This is all from yeah. Waypoint Radio's uh E three podcast, I think day one or day day two. I forget I if you're interested in hearing their comments like firsthand then then look for waypoint radio on on whatever your podcaster is and take a listen in. it yeah, certainly made me old. excited about it yeah yeah that me too like well after the trailer I was like we'll see and then i listened to them and i was like oh nice okay i'm pretty stoked for this then yeah so we have a question in the chat um uh, vitamin asks mm -hmm. do you feel like the style hasn't evolved enough enough from what we have now yes i think so should check out my pinterest board for hack the planet that's the future people <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it just it should be uh weirder it was it was it's very generic it's just yeah. like pants and shirts and jackets with pins like because kids like pins these days right and like you know <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's fine pins. that's fine pins are cool like that's fine but uh yeah i mean like you could go there's lots of options you could go with the style right like you could go super retro mm -hmm. and be like we're doing like 80s 90s or we're doing like we're being very uh you know looking militaristic and chrome and neon with mm -hmm. like like dyed punk hair and like that's everybody you mm -hmm. know um which i think is very indicative of like a lot of the imagery from the original cyberpunk game role-playing game mm -hmm like you like it was just lots of like like it looked like really cheesy like 80s sci-fi like almost like like i don't know gem in the holograms meets like uh johnny mnemonic or something like wait are you like, saying that that's what it did look like yeah I oh was, i thought you I, were saying that they could have done that and i would have preferred like a little bit more of a retro look actually color, if they were yeah. going to do that I yeah wanted more color pop yeah 
Oh, yeah. no. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying the original RPG looks like. Yes, right. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, not yeah. the not the video game trailer. Like right. I so they could have done that or they could have done something kind of like that but like updated. Yep. Like you see like you see on Tumblr these days. Mm -hmm. Like oh, yeah. like a lot of that type of look but with new tech and more polished art. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, just like I don't know. I, I think the art to me was pretty boring. Yeah, they kind of yeah. went with that style that I guess you see in lots of like cyberpunky dystopian future movies where the cyberpunk is just lines on the arm and you're supposed to see like real skin like chunks in between that. And that's like, okay, that's fine, but it's like a little it's that's not very imaginative. I think I agree. Like Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what did that really well even though I hated it was the new Ghost in the Shell movie with Scarlett Johansson. It did that style where it's like it looks hyper re it's like plastic mm -hmm. you know yeah. and, and uh like you saw the little lines and everything and the, you know the one villain had like porcelain yeah. details like on his cyber tech which was super cool like that's never been seen before like that that's a cool way to update that style and this doesn't really include mm -hmm. any of it i think that is uh and this is like a sidebar i guess undoubtedly the best thing about that movie like oh. if you <laughs> Like it's the worth visuals. watching, I think, for the visuals of what yeah. they do in that movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love the. It was gorgeous. Like, even when she's just like walking down the street and all the crap behind her, like mm -hmm. that was great. I love that with like the the koi fishes and like all the different yeah. stuff. It it just felt it did mm -hmm. feel again in that movie, just like like Blade Runner two, where when they're down there and experiencing stuff it's like really cool and dense but then when it like goes out to the grander picture it just feels like not much is happening even though they're trying to like facilitate this mm. urban sprawl where all this action and holograms and stuff is going it still had the like mm -hmm. okay but nothing's happening out there right mm. <laughs> There's yeah just, like so holograms being like hey buy some milk and all there that. is kind of now this like generic like let's have a set uh, with like you know kind of er with like food vendors and uh holograms and and they walk down the street and maybe it's a little rainy and shiny you know like that's like the the go-to scene in those movies now Look, uh, if your, if your property does not have a noodle vendor then get out <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> movie vendor or no <laughs> it's one of the pillars of cyberpunk come on let's be real like Even that was fantastic and innovative in the original Blade Runner. <laughs> like, how many decades ago was that? Yeah. Like, I mean, now uh, it's a great callback. I think. I think it's it, still it, good. It's I like a it. good callback, but yeah. if it's the only thing you're doing, it's boring. Yeah, you've got to do more than callback. You've got to actually yeah. add some of your own. Did yeah. you see there was a dude eating the ramen bowl in the trailer as well? Mm -hmm. The guys mm -hmm. like put the gut to his head yep. or whatever. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. cool. He was a cool design character, like some kind of guy or something. I thought. Yeah, yeah. But while I was watching, I was definitely like ramen check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there were a lot of like, I mean, generally I like the the aesthetics of the of the trailer. I can totally see what you're saying about the lack of like inventiveness, maybe, or the not pushing it far enough, like to get to a new interesting space. Totally. Um, yeah. But there were definitely a few like, things that did kind of push in that direction like individual characters which gives me like some yeah, yeah i've heard <laughs> that the customization for each character is pretty like intense too like that's cool lots of different hairstyles lots of different uh like tattoos and like hopefully my my hope is that they have as diverse amount of customization at the start of it uh as the cyberpunk 2020 with all the interesting like cyber mods mm -hmm. that are pretty cheap and stuff like that like mm -hmm. the different neon tattoos and the different yeah. other things i'm yeah. wondering if like upgrades is going to be like skill chips and shit like that just like in mm. cp 2020 like hardwired esque type yeah. stuff where they're like you have leveled up and yeah. you're like cha -ching, cha -ching. <laughs> you know? i mean like, given sweet. that it's a it's a it i think they're saying like it's an open world role-playing game right or it's certainly mm -hmm. like a role-playing game and if you're making like a big blockbuster role-playing game in 20 hell it's probably going to come out in 2020 if you're making yeah. that in 2020 uh you better have at least as many customization options as skyrim 
or yeah. or <laughs> yeah. Dragon Age Three, and they had a ton of customization options. So I had yeah. like yeah, and I and I haven't played The Witcher. Have you played? Yeah, you neither have I. Witcher? I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what that does. One of my friends. One of my friends, Leslie, is playing the third one right now, which is apparently the best one because yep. it directly addresses toxic masculinity. Oh, and really? I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, hopes up now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is probably like a really good barometer for the kind of thing we'd get because I think The Witcher, I've heard that as well, like really good on one, one of these kind of aspects. Terrible on diversity. Like with the bullshit right. excuse that it's medieval Europe, so everyone's white, which is just not true. Uh, check out medieval people of color on Twitter if you want. Just a ton of examples. Uh, oh yeah. Um, so the there's a lot of diversity in the trailer. Um, that's good. Uh, what are they gonna What are they gonna do with with it? Is it gonna be handled well? Um, yeah. What are I we gonna see on gender would. issues? Yeah. What are we gonna see in terms of like non-binary or gender fluid people? They have used apparently the word fluid a lot in there in talking about the narrative. So they better they better be a little bit uh, they better have some of that in the character customization as well. Well, it's probably going to do that thing where it has to be binary, right? Because like the dialogue options or whatever, some bullshit. Also, like it seemed like there it was likely there would be some kind of brothel situation, like there is in Witcher, uh, and like. Uh, uh, I don't know, but they, but the NPCs could be very diverse. It seemed like I saw some gender queer punks on mm-hmm. the street, you know. So, cross some fingers on yeah. that. I mean, even if they had, I mean, I don't know if this would work, especially with that Budweiser voiceover. But they could have oh. a, they could have a situation where you got to choose every aspect of your character, including which voice you wanted, and that that was independent of whatever else you chose for vin- for gender. Like, they could do that. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't seem to be a programming limitation to me. Um, It'd be cool if they just had a third option. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll be mm-hmm. interesting. But the, it's definitely in their sales pitch, because, like, in some of the reading of it, the sales pitch is, like, uh, the world in between is where decadence, sex, and pop culture mix with violent crime, extreme poverty, and the unattainable promise of the American dream. So mm. if they're, like upfront pitching this i think that's the text from like the beginning of the demo where it's just like down you know like doing the blade runner this is what's up with the future folks uh the the close linking of decadence and sexuality there gives makes me like give it kind of like big side eye uh i was just read read an interesting article on the use of orgies in roman um in in roman films uh, as a way to signal appropriate kinds of masculinity to a con- to contemporary audiences, um, so yeah. yeah, I'd be hmm, that I'm yeah I'm weary of that for sure. Well, yeah, it, uh, yeah, I don't know. Sexual, it, it's a bummer that sexuality can't because that was one of my favorite things in the original cyberpunk role playing game is that you had the attachment for the Mister, Mrs, whatever. You could basically switch your genitals out if you wanted to if you yeah. bought that attachment uh yeah. and it's just like you know it's a binary right it's like you can have a penis or a vagina but that's op- awesome that they like it's one of the o- i think maybe the only role-playing game i've ever seen that's done that so like i don't know that has always endeared me to ideas of sex in a cyberpunk role-playing game it'd be cool if they did it in the video game too i i don't think they're going to i have very low hopes for gender and sexuality yeah yeah <laughs> in video yeah. games in general like <laughs> right yeah so yeah, vitamin says in the chat again um vitamin says austin walker asked about non-binary people they were like the character creator creator isn't done yet but didn't confirm or deny anything so right yeah yeah, yeah they were we'll see. About it. And, i mean says- that should be that i mean for me i would want that to be pretty central uh i would hope that they have thought about that and i would hope that is not something that is so trivial that they can leave it to get washed aside in the final crunch when they can't fit everything they want in well it could be like the fact that everybody is called the same name v Mm -hmm. is like positive in that effect like they Mm -hmm. could do some Mm -hmm. stuff with that right if they if they wrote the script right or it might just be a convenient way of rather than because they don't have a label and maybe like the dragonborn and skyrim or the inquisitor and in da3 like depending on where it, where it's gender neutral um yeah 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 it also says uh 
in a world where you have no future, what matters is that you control who you are to survive and protect your independence. You modify your body with advanced cyberware and take jobs others would never dare. You choose yeah. to live free, bound by no system or controls. The only rules you obey are your own because you're a cyberpunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sounds like a libertarian future. To that's me. exactly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's like. I mean, I w I would love for that to include the ability to shape your own gender as you want, right? And your character to conform to whatever kind of like gender or yeah. identity that you you want. Um, I don't understand cool, the gender but... uh, coding issue in blockbuster video games, like how it works 100. percent I've read a little bit about it. How. That's often why they only do one character because they have to like write the whole thing for a different gender. And I'm like, well, why don't you just write things so that it could fit any gender? You could do that, number one. Maybe pick like a voice actor, you know, that isn't heavily masculine or feminine, or I don't know. There's like lots of solutions to that problem, right? But I never people don't care about it that much. I mean, the I think the fact of the matter is that if it's a priority for the game company, they could do it. If they get up, if they start it at the beginning and that's part yeah. of their thing, then they could do it. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Did you guys were you guys watching the Ubisoft um, or on Twitter when the Ubisoft were doing their announcement and they announced Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey and then they were like, you can play as a woman, and all of a sudden, all over the twi all over the Twitter sphere, thousands of voices erupt in, uni in unison. <laughs> Ubisoft has worked out how to how to make how to animate women. I was like, <laughs> yes, good after the one two years ago where they had these four identical looking white stubble dudes it's like character choice no i can't tell those guys <laughs> apart like as a white stubble dude i those guys are too like mm, yeah, yeah. The, the best uh the best character creation i've ever played in a video game for gender like expressing gender queer and trans identities was dream daddy it was like they just gave you it, it was like, I don't know, kind of popular gender queer illustration style where it's like, here's a gender anonymous person. And like, you can add these gender identifiers to them if you want. And you could add a binder to them to identify that they might be a trans man. Or you could add a beard or long hair or lipstick. Like, it was just so smart. And it's like a stupid, it's like a dating sim. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like if they can do it, the blockbuster video game can do it. Yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. I think there'd be like not much more punk than being like a non binary person that looks femme with a beard and a giant gun and being like, trying to fuck you up, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so punk. It is like so punk to do that. And so yeah, I don't know. Anyway. That's yeah. my gender <laughs> that's my gender queer rant. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how it shapes out. I don't, I really don't know. No. I know that the company yeah. has really shitty, they're, they're rallying against unionization because they consider game development a specialized skill. They literally were like, we don't need to unionize gaming because gaming is a specialized skill. We're not like those people. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Didn't, didn't you read something unfortunate about the gender two the a2 were telling me oh, you're a bit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of gender incident yeah let me actually i realized that i should oh, okay. google that up on my other computer here so i don't have to disrupt oh, the, yeah, yeah. the stream Drop the in, i like i'm getting I, I wasn't incensed anymore. You need to incense me. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, before we before we get to that, do you remember? Did you have you guys rewatched the original Cyberpunk teaser trailer from 2013 oh, the, recently? The one with like that that woman getting shot at. With yeah. And stuff? Yeah. I have not. Yeah, I rewatched it. Pretty dark. Yeah, it's just. I mean, it's this cyber killer android woman, um, wearing very tight fitting clothing, with like big arm blades getting shot by guns in slow motion and they're not having any effect because she's cyber awesome um yeah so i was pleased to see that this trailer had significantly dialed down the like the cheesecake and the gun porn <laughs> um, yeah that is a bonus maybe they're getting better <laughs> maybe 
Um, I don't know. There was like a shot of like a strip club or something in there, but they were they were also like, this is definitely rated R. That's gonna be like okay. gonna be in sexual situations. I don't, let's I don't let's talk us. about. You remember you saw Mute, right, Fraser? Yeah. Do you remember the the strip bar? That's like the most gender queer strip bar I've ever seen in a cyberpunk thing. It was like they had dancing men and dancing ladies and trans people and gender queer people and people of like all colors. <laughs> like it was really good. And I was like, you know, you could do strip clubs like that. Like strip clubs of the future, feature mm -hmm. sexual desires of all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I watched a little bit of Adam Cobol's playthrough of uh, Android um, Become oh, yeah. Human, where they went into a strip club and he stopped before and was like, okay, let's do David Cage bingo. Uh, what are we going to see in the strip club? Um, and actually, the gender was, if you just think of it as a binary, was even. Like, there were as many, mm -hmm. like, Android my cameras working out, uh, as many uh, male androids as there were female androids. But there weren't. There wasn't really anybody who was kind of like ambiguous or queer in any kind of identifiable way. At least from my brief look at it. Um, right. The which, issues which with just, that game are a whole separate kind of can of worms. It just says a lot about the writers. Like yeah. they just they're, they're probably not even thinking about it, right? Which. Yeah. Which means you don't have a queer dev on your team. <laughs> yeah, the writers yeah. are probably just like they go into a, a strip club and they begin talking to this person and then. Yeah other people are like okay let's make a strip club guys yeah. right. or if they yeah, do in defense of any queer devs that they might actually have they might not be empowered to like make any changes for whatever sort of hierarchical reason is involved. which are obviously stupid yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. For, yeah. For one way or the other <laughs> that's always one of my huge criticisms of like you know the cyborg or android or or uh, projected sex workers in cyberpunk movements or media, right? It's like they're often, they're, they're almost always women, like, uh, you know, Joy, or uh, in Ghost in the Shell, it was, uh, you know, m maybe a, a black woman. Um, but, and, 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 you know, at least that was queer, a queer situation, but it's still a lady. <laughs> and so, so it's kind of like, Mm, could we change this? And everyone's like, well, there was that one time, you know, in that Steven Spielberg movie, and there was the hot guy sex worker. And I was like, oh, yeah, that one time. <laughs> yeah, the AI movie. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like Jude, Jude Law or something. And it's like, okay, Jude Law is a wet dream, but this is like the, <laughs> literally the one that everyone points to all the time. Like, it just needs to be more diverse. Oh, no, yeah. I'm kidding. And he, and he was kind of like, you know, programmed to love a anyone too, right? So yeah, <laughs> you know, it wasn't like he evolved from his initial programming. Was like, I like men now, right? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> he was just like, no, nah, yeah, I uh, my thing is using my penis, and I'll use it if you like, but you gotta give me money. <laughs> um, so you're ready Which to be fine yeah 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 that's fine <laughs> are you guys ready to be outraged yeah let's ready. be outraged okay so this is from i'm quoting here from polygon's uh article on this uh devs comments at e3 um this is relating to the e3 demo as will be not the trailer as will be clear right. so um there was one scene in particular from the e3 demo that badowski pointed to as an example it opened with a simple quest to retrieve a kidnapped woman, but turned into a bizarre and gruesome tableau. The kidnappers weren't holding her for ransom. They were planning to chop her up for spare parts, harvesting the high-tech implants throughout her body for sale on the black market. Okay, so, fine. Um, other players gun down the enemy. After players gun down the enemies in the compound, they find the kidnapped woman and another NPC lying naked in the bathtub full of ice. So, as uh, this is sidebar to the quote, um, as Austin said, and I think this is actually important to understanding the context here, the other NPC is a naked male. All right, so two naked bodies, apparently. Um, there's no pictures of any of this. Uh, with her eyes rolled back in her head and her body glistening with water, the player must carry her in their arms out into the light to the waiting paramedics. Um, and then he says, nudity is important, us, important to us because of one reason. This is cyberpunk, so people augment their body. So the body... So the body is no longer sacrum, uh, bracketed as sacred, it's profanum, bracketed as profane, 
um, because people modify everything. They are losing their connection to the body and the meat, to the meat. And that's why we need to use the nudity in many situations, many situations. Um, yeah. Which sounds like Mike Pondsmith told them what Cyberpunk 2020 was really about, and then that guy didn't understand it, and he said a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> there, are, there has been a lot of conversation arising from this, obviously, on Twitter, as uh, you're all aware of, whether you're aware of the conversation like arising after it or in the context of this. Um, the one thing that I saw someone say, which was interesting, is that uh, because this game company is Polish, um, that Sacrum and Profanum are in use in oh, like okay. a Polish context a in a way that in, are not in ours. For me, it reads, and I presume this is where it has come into, uh, if that's the case, that it's come into um, use in Poland, is uh, with um, a anthropologist, I think he is, or religious studies scholar called Aliada, uh, who wrote a book about sacred poles um, and it's pretty widely like known in religious study circles and so what it made me think of is the way that we in America and the English sort of speaking world use terms that originally came out of academic study like Gen X or Millennial but use them in ways that are not really recognizable in their academic context so that doesn't really help explain very much it just made me think of that that there might be like a, a more benign use of sacrum and profanum but also the way that he explains this it pretty obviously to me sounds like a kind of straight transfer of the humanity cost from exactly. cyberpunk 2020 or essence from um Shadowrun, both of which are sort of really essentializing aspects of what i called in my twitter thread today technophobia which i think I, I'm pretty sure that given your work, <laughs> the two of you would basically agree with me that that is bullshit. Yes. Yes. It leads to many, many problematic things happening. And yeah, that's why my Twitter thread was all about, well, let me tell you about First Wave. <laughs> it's, it's all about embodiment issues, basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But it is interesting like it's weird that he wouldn't just be like here at cd project red or blah 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 we believe in sex positivity and we believe this is a positive example of that instead he's using like he's weird like maybe he was just really flustered or something i don't know but yeah. you say that it's colloquially he uses them all the time right but yeah so in the uh, so uh Vitamin actually in the in the chat says as a polish person person yeah that's a very common expression um, which makes me want to want to want to look into it very much more actually <laughs> to see how exactly it's used in that context. The, the uh, expression bothers me less than the situation, the, the visual situation. Like you are, you find two bodies in a bathtub. They're naked. The one you're rescuing is the woman. You physically touch the naked woman and carry her out of the bathtub. <laughs> like. Uh, I think it's awesome. I'm, I'm very nudity positive. I would like for nudity to be fine and everything. And I think that we're puritanical in America. And it's also probably a European American divide. But even in Europe, there's like sexualized nudity that's a problem. And it is um, like in a sexist way, right? Mm -hmm. Like usually ladies are more sexualized than men are. Um, and so, it, yeah, that's that's where that reads as a huge problem to me, mm -hmm. like that the women are probably going to be more sexualized than the men, that you're going to rescue the women, not the men. That, that, that I wonder, it would that, be, that type of situation. it would be interesting, it, yeah, you froze. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting if it was the opposite, kind of, like if, if they switched you, well, yeah. Because because in the demo they chose to be a female player, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. yep. and then you were picking up another female. So I wonder if you were the male, if you would pick up the male body. I bet you'd still pick up the female. No. Yeah, because that character is somebody that that is, that person, according to Austin's description, is somebody that you are paid to rescue, and she is like a super rich corporate corporate executive, uh, which is one of the other things that like there's a there's an interesting thing there about power dynamics and the exposure of the the powerful yeah. woman um but the That's other weird. yeah so because she that you you take her outside and then as soon as you can reactivate i guess her trauma team software yeah. then the corporate people turn up to like make sure that she's okay and tell you to fuck off 
It, it was yeah. the <laughs> was what I uh, took away from that. Austin made the interesting comparison actually between the nudity of the this sort of high powered corporate executive who has changed her body to her own desires or a, a maybe whatever um, to uh, the major in Ghost in the Shell who often appears like kind of nude um, with that like well. invisible like <laughs> skin suit thing so not technically nude but basically nude. Um, I mean, you could probably presume many of the rich people have been modified in a setting, but if you're just showing them in naked in a bathtub, I don't think that that is really showing off what, what those differences are. Mm-hmm. Like, I actually thought, um, ah, what was the stupid Netflix TV show that came out? Altered Carbon did a really good job of showing off the, the rich people and how they were body perfect. Mm-hmm. Like, they yeah. had these clothes that were kind of, like, transparent and silky and gorgeous, and they were like, look, I'm perfectly how I want it to be type of thing. Um, sorry, I keep skipping when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so, yeah I agree. So it's like the, it's the Kim Kardashian thing. Like, I have the money to sculpt my body. Mm-hmm. But I think that there's a good way to show that. In a yeah, this yeah. Is one of the, that, that kind of reasoning is one of the reasons why I'm extremely interest, interested to see what the context is around this and how they deal with wealthy people and wealthy people's bodies and what the culture is in the rest of the game um i think there's a lot of shock value that comes from that quote and it's pretty it's like it's pretty foot and mouth kind of stuff really without the rest of the context so i'm curious to see whether the rest of the context is there or whether it's indicative of a general kind of like i don't know unthoughtful attitude also the major in ghost in the shell did not have autonomy body changes Yep. Like we, we mm-hmm. like she was a she's a weapon, mm-hmm. and that's completely different. <laughs> sure. But there are aspects of her where she is going around naked because she doesn't care because it's not her body and she's only concerned about like her consciousness. Uh, oh yeah, right. absolutely, and yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. 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 The the interesting thing about it too, though, is like um, the difference between like this in your head kira you might be picturing like the witcher 3 guy picturing that and like and like picking up a nude body but it's actually a first person narrative which changes it like in my head too right because they're trying to make it so that you are the one who are experiencing that instead of a third person i wrote or i didn't write it but i read an essay on how kind of seminal deus ex was for uh video games because they made they made the conscious decision to do a first person narrative so that when you were modding yourself, it felt like you were modding your own body, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're in that headspace, and it uh, that's part of the reasons for like its success. So it's definitely it's a different situation than having the camera behind your character going up to the bathtub and even like shielding your your character's body shielding the camera from looking at this person instead it's your eyes looking down at both of these bodies uh you know a little bit sexualized probably because of the water and all that stuff and you're picking up her body if like first person with your own eyes and then bringing her out so i think it's even more a little like yeah and that that one's one of the things that i'm like that's so hard to tell there's so much about this that's so hard to read um i seem to remember that in that same waypoint podcast that austin said that it wasn't particularly sexualized but the way that it's described in this polygon article it totally does sound sexualized so yeah what well, it sounds like yeah. there was a bunch of dudes playing the game like i wonder yeah. what <laughs> ladies playing the game would feel <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like yeah, i, I think that also it's a damsel in distress also like i I think that's the problem i think it's really interesting to to delve into nudity and body things i think Mm -hmm. that's super cool but like it's not this this scenario and the fact that they chose to showcase this scenario is disturbing yeah Yeah, because i'm all for there being an equal representation of rescuing dudes and rescuing non-dudes and every kind of possible yeah. thing in between the entire spectrum like i want yeah. everybody to be rescued by the character over the game but yeah Absolutely. as you say this is the one that they chose to put as the showcase so that says something about what they're thinking or maybe what they're not thinking yeah, yeah. i think i think it's very telling hopefully some criticism will, will drive them away from this <laughs> yeah when well, if i recall the the podcast uh, austin does mention at one point 
there was one woman in the audience and she was very excited about the demo <laughs> like mm. he, he reiterated that a couple times so it does sound like you know a packed room <laughs> full of dudes with one uh female and it was a woman who was uh just a part of the audience and not giving the demo either yeah so but yeah. uh I think this segues nicely into the, the essay, to mm -hmm, yeah. the humanity cost thing. And I wanted to <clears throat> see what Kira thought of that as well. But uh, in, why are you laughing, Kira? <laughs> <laughs> Kira outrage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, I think you'll, I don't know, because you seem like a fan of Cyberpunk 2020. Uh, yeah. So you might agree with this, but in the essay, it posits that uh, throughout the text, it kind of does the, it's not like a generic text, it tries to convey a lot about the setting and convey how much fashion and uh, consumerism and uh, proprietarian stuff is conveyed in, uh, wrapped up in a wrapper of like what your character should look like with the style over substance being the primary thing that you should be thinking about. You don't mm -hmm. walk into a room, you stride into it. You don't mm -hmm. do anything unless it looks good, that kind yeah. of stuff. And then on the flip side of that stuff with the humanity cost, what they posit with that is that it becomes like a dichotomy where uh, you're looking at all these images in the book of being like, I want to be a vid star and getting all of these cool upgrades and stuff like that, kind of like in the Cyberpunk 27, the seven trailer where uh, the woman's doing the makeup and like you can tell she's beautifying herself but she's missing her like lower half which is probably perfect as soon as it goes in right mm -hmm. um you can actually like see that. it on the side in the shot oh can you yeah. okay I didn't, yeah i didn't see that it's super cool it's just chilling and uh <clears throat> but, makeup thing oh, <laughs> the whole i can hear you though what did, what did you uh, say just think Kira? that entire um thing was roboted out yeah i heard like something about a mirror and you had your hand like this <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh! All I, it was a very small comment. I'm very sorry. It was just like her. You could see her uh, jaw sitting on the makeup table, like it was like a like earrings. Or something. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Right, like an accessory, like yeah. half of her face yep. is an accessory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, like your face is an accessory. She's got a couple more of them that. in a drawer. Yeah. Yeah. And That's so, cool. what they're saying is really cool about the text and the actual humanity cost of it is that uh, the text is reinforcing how much you should want all of these upgrades and things, but that as you get them and buy them in the game, they take away your empathy and you become uh, like quote unquote less human. Right. But that is a more realistic summation of what they want people to feel in the setting because uh, like that's what consumerism does to people ostensibly is like remove their free thinking and so the game is like ostensibly cleverly with this uh essay at least they're positing that the the actual text sets you up with this consumerism and then uh when you get all the upgrades when you become like the rocker girl for instance and you get all these different vid star upgrades you can uh like rock out this entire room and you're very like efficient and good at your job, but at the same time, having gotten those upgrades, you can relate less to everybody else in the room because you have lower empathy. Yeah. So this is from that? the Atterbury and Pearson, <laughs> uh, Atterbury and Pearson 2018. Today's cyborg is stylish. Um, I put a, I'll put a link in the show notes to, I'll put a link to the abstract in the show notes. Uh, it's in an academic edited volume um, on cyberpunk and visual culture. Yes. There we go. Uh, just came out like the beginning <laughs> hey. of this year. Um, yeah. So I, if you have the luxury of having access to a university library, you can probably get this. Or if you live near a big public university library, you can probably go in and look for it on the shelf and maybe read it. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> it rehabilitated humanity costs a little bit for me. Um, because I generally think that humanity cost and essence loss are like indicative of a kind of 80s fear of the technology that is not something that is relevant to modern cyberpunk. No. Um, yeah. yeah. But the way that this article argued that it had been done as Fraser just related, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Kind of, There's a little bit of nuance there. Yeah. And also, like, um, 
regardless of how you feel about it, it's like a an unending seminal thing that has happened in tabletop role playing mm -hmm. history, which is true. Yeah. A lot of people have like appropriated those <laughs> mechanics, like Shadowrun and stuff right. yeah. like that. It's funny because I played before I played Cyberpunk. I played Vampire for years and mm -hmm. or, I don't know some years in my teens, and I was like, uh, it's the same. It's the same thing. The more vampire you become, the less right. human you become. But you get more vampire powers that are super cool and you can live forever, mm -hmm. but you care less about killing people, blah, blah, blah. And like, uh, it wasn't very, so so when I played Cyberpunk, I was like, oh, this is exactly like the humanity rules in Vampire. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah, yeah I, I just didn't really think twice about it when I played it at first. I think um, in Vampire, it's explicitly, s I mean, I, I think in Vampire, the, the dichotomy between, explicitly mm -hmm. between human and monster is maybe a little bit, like I could see a game that didn't have that, and you could go embrace both, be more human and also more monstrous. But I feel like in Vampire, they're explicitly trying to set up a tension. Yeah, well, it, I mean, I think that in the '90s, cyborg was still synonymous with monster, like hmm. uh, you know the Terminator situation. Mm, right. Like, uh, yeah. It was, I think, right. Like it was like this. Yeah. Like when you're playing cyberpunk, you're still kind of becoming a monster when you're getting yep. machining machined. Right. And so it, it was interesting because I saw a, a Twitter post that was talking about how ableist it was. Uh, and as like a, a newly disabled person, I, I was having a lot of feelings about that because mm -hmm. I was I was like, dang, you know, if I could get technological implants, I could solve my fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. I'd get that shit in a second. And that wouldn't make me less human. Mm -hmm. I've Absolutely. had an IUD before. It doesn't make me less human. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we take we, we, my boyfriend is type one diabetic. He has to d live on insulin. That doesn't mm -hmm. make him less human. Yep. But uh, you know, I think that it's like the it, it's like that idea contemporarily versus the monster idea like in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. And and. Mm -hmm. I, w I would like them to update that. Yeah. Well, and, and in so, like to link that directly to, to Cyberpunk 2020, when you reach Humanity Cost Zero, you become a cyber zombie. Yeah, so, yeah. Kaikoshi. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. You just go, you're wild and you're an assassin, you don't care. Right, yeah. yeah. And because yeah. uh, you're a machine now, and being a machine meant being a monster. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think to some extent it still does. There's lots of media that still posits machines are evil. Black, All Mirror, of Black Mirror, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very very popular to think, and I think it's mm -hmm. a cool horror. Like when mm -hmm. you think about queer monsters, that's an interesting read on the the monster cyborg, mm -hmm. and that you know, I that's neat. Yeah. But I can totally see people's criticism saying it's ableist. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I think things like have changed a lot in in terms of the amount of technology that we have available to us and the kinds of things that can realistically be done to us, but also in terms of the kinds of things that people think of as being technology i mean when yeah. it, i feel like i have yeah. this argument every now and then with people yeah. on the internet about um the kind of like people are on their cell phones too much all that kind of thing right socrates yeah. like yeah. complained that people were writing notes in his lectures right yeah. so this is not new right people yeah. have always complained about the new technology and writing is a technology we've been outsourcing our minds onto paper for yeah. thousands yeah. of years yeah. Uh, and we're just now doing it onto phones or yeah, yeah, yeah. like what well, and like you know the printing press used to be evil and trains mm -hmm. used to, uh, you know reading the newspaper yeah it's, yeah. yeah yeah but if it benefits the then the rich then it's fine like eye care dental care that's mm -hmm. that's cool that's not right. augmentation that's just that's just a basic human yeah. right yeah and so <laughs> thinking about that was something I explicitly thought about that when I was making the sprawl did you explicitly think about that with the veil Fraser, or did you not even come at it from that perspective because with the sprawl i was coming at it from a perspective perspective of i my forebears in this genre are cyberpunk and show cyberpunk 2020 and Shadowrun. so what are they doing what do i not want to do what do i what do i want to do and one of the things that i explicitly rejected was that kind of humanity cost for this very kind of reason mm -hmm. i was like no this is putting up technology as an evil and integration of technology as a bad thing and i don't want to make that statement I want to say different things about technology. Did you even have, did you ever have that thought? Yeah, I did. I didn't, I wasn't aware of Cyberpunk 2020 or Shadowrun or anything. Well, actually I had played Shadowrun and I think that's where it came from with like the essence thing. Cause mm -hmm. I think that was one of the like guttural rejection, 
reactions that I had when I played that game when I made a street samurai and people were like, yeah, you can have wire reflexes and all this stuff, but your essence is only going to be like 0 0.5 or whatever. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? They're like, hey, it doesn't matter as long as you have like a little bit of essence. And I'm like, okay, well, that's stupid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was just like uh, wanting to keep it pretty trim but yet everything in the veil is like a toolbox and a mm -hmm. framework. So that's why it's just all tags and it doesn't mm -hmm. have anything to do with essence and all of that kind of stuff. If you want to engage with the actual philosophy of that kind of stuff, then you'd be choosing the playbook that is in like zeroing in on that, like the ghost of the shell, uh, essentially playbook that right. I made for the called the apparatus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, because all yeah. of your playbooks have, all of them have cyberware except for one, right? There's one that's explicitly about the rejection of cyberware, and the rest yeah. all have it. Yeah. yeah, everybody in the sprawl does as well. Yeah, and the honed... Yeah, I made... that's the thing I thought about. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Kara? Uh, the... oh. <laughs> Fraser you first. Go ahead, Kara. <laughs> I'm roboting. Finish your sentence. <laughs> uh, so the, the playbook that does that, I made sure that they have a move that uh, specifically states that they can do anything that anybody else can do that is enhanced. And I've, I had interesting polarizing reactions to that playbook actually, where people were like, this is ableism. I'm like, no, it's, it's literally set up so that they can do what everyone else can do. And that's the commentary on it, right? And people are like, well, I don't know. It seems seems not great and i'm like well i mean <laughs> what do you mean like people were, people are like you could totally use this to just like be an uber mensch i'm like don't be a dick right like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't design <laughs> for people to be jerks with it right like take it as it is intended like the whole playbook you get humanity by saving people and people are like well I could be a dick with that. I'm like, how are you going to be a dick saving people? Like, I would love to know. <laughs> right? yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah, you can't, like, you can't really prevent bad faith players. Yeah, right? yeah you play can't of your, around your that. Approach, yeah, yeah, it's just, like, people can do what they want. No matter how many times you print Nazi punks fuck off on the front of your yeah. book, it's not going to yeah. actually help. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Kira, does, is, is this relevant to to sync or your yeah. kind of work? Yeah, I thought about this a lot for sync because obviously I'm very pro tech and I'm tired of tech being evil in every single goddamn thing. And so I feel very strongly about it. And I wanted one of the main themes of sync to be that technology is good, but fusing with tech, being a cyb cyborg is a good thing. You're not monstrous. You're just, it's fine. It's good. It's just human. It's just human. Like it's not even transhuman. It's just human to use technology and tools. And um, so one of the moves I put early on, I think one of the outcomes was uh, make technology seem warm. And that's, I also have that as a principle, like a GM principle. Um, yes. And no one gets to see the GM principles really unless they're running it, but the players always saw that move outcome and they'd be like, what does this mean? What do you, what do you mean by make technology warm? What does that mean? Yeah. And I, I thought that was so interesting because I don't think it's that complicated. I, don't, no. I, I think that that can be easily interpreted into like, make it feel, make it feel good, make it feel comfortable, make it feel cozy, make it feel warm, right? I think Instead it's just of make it feel cold. Yeah. Question, What's does up? this technology have a solar source of some kind? <laughs> right. well, I think you'll find it has an internal is fusion it, reactor. Can we name your technology HFTT instead, please? <laughs> and the, like, no, I'm not talking, I'm definitely not talking trash on the player, right? Who played the same outcome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That people, uh, you know, couldn't wrap their minds around that. <laughs> and I'm like, we are cyborgs, we have cell phones, like, right. you know. At the very least, if you're a woman, you might be on birth control. You, you, I mean, these, these are things that, that affect us and turn us into, you, you know, affect our bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Know? So yeah. I, I, think, I think we just don't think about them or teach them or talk about them right. in those ways. And so that, yeah. that was very important to me to, to portray. I think it's kind yeah. of cliche that technology would feel cold. So if they if they looked yeah. at it and saw that, they would probably immediately <laughs> get it. But going the other way is an unusual, like flipping of the of the of the kind of status quo i guess which is kind of the point <laughs> yeah consumers yeah. wouldn't be like woohoo right like they'd be like i don't want this it feels weird and they'd be like okay we'll fix that right 
we have a thing for that. <laughs> it's called Apple. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I did yeah. that similarly, actually, in the veil, except that it's GM principles and that I'm telling people to make a color palette for technological versus environmental. And I usually tell people Ooh. to give the advice of switching it so that when they're describing technology, they describe it as if it was natural. And when they're describing natural things, they describe it as if it's technological. No, that's that's cool. cool. Neuro, that's a neuromancer thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it a neuromancer thing? I completely forget neuromancer. I read it a billion years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a... I saw, actually, uh, I was talking to, because it was just origin. So uh, Mendez was out here talking trash about neuromancer, saying it was like the whitest racist thing ever, most racist thing ever. It was like uh, William Gibbs trying to, you know, he's like, Jamaicans are cool. I want to hang, I want to hang out with black people. Black culture sounds really cool. So I'm going to write something. <laughs> and yeah. like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm breaking up. Um, uh, I heard you. The, oh, yeah. cool. So, yeah. and, and he even Gibson. said that uh, Molly's nickname was like Steppen Razor. And that's like such a black exploitation name, you know, and mm. like, I just things I hadn't thought about Neuromancer. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot of fetishization of foreign cultures in Neuromancer. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it would. I guess it depends how generous you want to be with the author, right? Uh, uh, true. I, I don't know that he was like, I wish I had more black friends. I'm gonna call this person Steppenwolf, <laughs> but, but like. Uh, Stephen Razor. Stephen Razor. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ste Stephen Wolf is something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, there's definitely problematic stuff with it, for sure, uh, yeah. that people tend to gloss over because they, they like that book a lot. But Yeah. And I love William Gibson, but I'm willing to be critical of his early writing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he, like, that. there's that famous quote when somebody asked him, uh, what it would be like to uh, talk to himself when he wrote Neuromancer, and he's like, I wouldn't buy that guy a beer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'd, I'd never heard that one. No, which I. I think most people would think about their younger selves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would not be down to buy 25 year old Fraser a beer because he was a dick. Oh no. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How do you Sorry. make it through actual play? <laughs> Sorry, I'm so freezy. I don't know what's up with my internet tonight. Uh, did we? Hit, what was your third point, though? Wasn't there a third point that you had, Hamish? Um, oh, yeah, my th the, the three that I kind of noted actually were um, the Cyberpunk 2020 specific callbacks. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The like good diversity which any game set in california especially something that looks like south Cal southern california has to be diverse yeah. um uh and the budweiser voiceover <laughs> yeah so my my <laughs> points and then just generally discussing the aesthetic so i think as far as that concerned my like my little checklist is is good i think oh, everything yeah. on my piece of paper because yeah because i because I'm the old retro guy, right? I think just about everything on this has been ticked off. <laughs> yeah, the... Socrates would be disappointed in you. Wow. Well, um, Why do you say like... that? Because <laughs> you're writing on paper. <laughs> Are you trying to get at something deeper? Are my questions all, annoying like you yet? I like the I think the, uh, it would be interesting, though, if they try to replicate what they're saying in that essay uh, about Cyberpunk 2020 and Essence Cost uh, appears in 2070. I wonder if, mm -hmm. like, that's a through line that they're like, oh, yeah, got to have that or, yeah. or what. It yeah, and we like... know that Mike Plonsmith's, uh, like, the stuff he thinks about Cyberpunk has changed between 2020 yeah. and 3.0. Like he yeah. got significantly more sort of like transhuman. So like one of the things that I think about this game is that the extent to which they stick closely to his kind of vision is probably indicative of how good the eventual game will be. Totally. Like I, I think the more that they try and like pull away from him and do their own thing that, cause he knows his shit. Um, yes. So yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting because I bet the narrative, the, 
the narrative is going to be like intense if it's him right because he's all about like uh, cyberpunk is about saving yourself not the world right so which is what what you read out from the the pitch sounds like it would totally fit in that yeah yeah doesn't totally. he live in a house but, in the woods in montana or something uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I read some interview with him a couple of years ago. I think when that um, so the the teaser trailer came out in 2013, I think I read something. It was like, oh wow, right. this guy is kind of living that like isolationist lifestyle. I think. Oh, oh yeah. Pond Smith. Lives yeah, in Montana? yeah. Montana is like one of the whitest states in the country. Yeah, That's well, super I mean, weird. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm not, not Montana. It just struck me as like one now. of those like living in the woods kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't want to move there for that reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, the thing that I'm worried about, though, is that they don't stick the landing, and then people start blaming Ponsworth. Uh, yeah. Ponsworth yeah. That sucks. That's because yeah. he's definitely like announced his attachment yeah. to it, and so it could easily be a thing that the people that are super fandom about CG, CD Project Red will just be like. Oh, that obviously is just going to be like his, uh, you know, problem. It's Ponce's problem because yeah. POCs are always the first to get thrown under the. Bus. I feel like though, if it doesn't yeah. stick the landing for us, like it may still stick the landing for all of those fans of The Witcher who don't necessarily see anything problematic about the diversity yeah. aspects or, or what have you. <laughs> that might right? be true. Because yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm kind, I'm kind of curious to play it just to see what everybody, what the fuss is about essentially because as soon as the cyberpunk trailer went up everyone was immediately like this is great the witcher is great so this is going to be great too in the most hyperbolic terms um so i don't know well curious all the yeah. uh, all the pieces that i read on the demo though say that this is not like the witcher 3 at all yeah <laughs> so well are they talking about gameplay or vibe or what are they yeah are who they knows about the, yeah it's hard to hard to say but it is bolstering to know that like austin's perspective of it was positive in the end and he's he's pretty hypercritical of these things mm -hmm. so yeah that's, that's true. pretty good yeah I do and, trust his uh, opinion. he yeah. also said that he thought that it it felt very much like this demo was going to be a thing released to the general public yeah yeah i was just going to say that as well we'll we will get to see this whole thing and then judge for ourselves at some point so we should yeah. um we'll probably revisit this topic <laughs> i think when that comes out um yeah and then we yeah, can apparently yeah with the witcher yeah. it's out. one and two apparently oh yeah i was just gonna what i was just gonna play the third one yeah like there's some things that i'm a completionist about but there's others that are not i'm not like i just started playing skyrim yeah. And there's all these hints in the in the game text about previous games. It's like, yeah, I'm not really going to go back and play like Daggerfall or Oblivion or <laughs> yeah. any of those ones. Or exactly. Whatever. Yeah. The thing that I really liked and noted about people talking about the demo as well was that uh, there was a lot of options that were way more fluid than like say Mass Effect Three, where you get to like dialogue trees and you just choose the thing and it waits forever. It's mm -hmm. like uh they come and go quite quickly and, uh, and they said every time there's an option to draw your gun even oh yeah that was super that situation. was amazing yeah yeah so yeah. i, I Wait, really like that it? there's like a there's a hostage negotiation thing mm -hmm. or something at first and every time they get to like a dialogue tree there's an option to take out your gun and shoot the person mm. but the guy who was giving the demo even said like you should not do this you will like this is a bad outcome for you but in every single situation in the game that has a uh, potential for violence, you can draw your gun and do violence yeah. to people even when you should not be able to. And it's not, just the, it's, a bad outcome it's not just that the option exists in the game to draw your gun at any point. Like in Skyrim, you can pull out your weapon anytime you want, but that the game will prompt you. Do you want to pull out your gun now? How about now? Mm -hmm. How about now? Are we there yet? How about now? <laughs> Which puts a real kind of like intensity to it. And that was one of the things yeah. that they talked about as well, like that it, that felt like dangerous and intense and that you work on them on the edge and that everybody was like bigger than bigger and tougher than you and that you were actually in like serious danger the whole time um That's so that cool. would be like it sounds from what they were saying that they kind of to me it sounds like they nail the corporate aspects and the oppressive oppressive aspects um the question is what they do with other things that are also important to cyberpunk like gender and identity and race and whatever yeah mm -hmm. yeah another thing that was cool was when 
after um, you take out a guard, um, you can like go in and, and use the ghost in the shell analog cable oh, plug yeah. into their mind yeah. and hack them. Yes. And then when you hack them, Kira, you don't hack the person, you you hack the entire <laughs> network of all the yes. other people. Yes. So that's that seems cool. like not a great security brain security system, but that's okay. Yeah, but yeah. they'll probably just be like, <laughs> I bet you anything that that will be an upgradable thing throughout the game, right? Where you're like, do you have the version three patch? For yeah, the yeah, yeah. Ones, which is or... pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Also, any kind of commentary you can make, I think, in cyberpunk in a cyberpunk game with guns uh, about you know America, you know, I don't know when you're talking about gun escalation. Maybe mm -hmm. think of contemporary American gun politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that other aspect of like the, this is a European company making a game set in America and how they handle that in all sorts of different ways is going to be fascinating to see. Yeah, the um, yeah. it'll be yeah. Like either way, I'm going to buy this game and play it for sure. So <laughs> they're definitely <laughs> yeah. going to make bank on this game. Um, it's just like debatable how how it's going to turn out and i think it's funny yeah. because they they said thankfully that they're targeting current gen uh, uh graphics and uh oh, cool. ps4 and all that kind of stuff to play it do you think that's really do you think that's good. accurate well that's what they said yeah like that's what the uh, polygon did an interview with the one of the devs or whatever and that's what they said hmm. but it's interesting because in two years the next xbox is coming yeah. out right and playstation they just announced that they both and the next playstation and you know? i heard heard from the guy at gamestop uh, over the weekend that they've just shipped dev kits i don't know where he heard it from so i don't have good <laughs> intel on this uh but if they've shipped dev kits then that probably means that we've got two years and if they haven't announced yeah. the date for it yet, mm. then I, I would have to think that it's going to be next generation as well, at least. Yeah. But well, I don't know if I that's know. what the, the dev guy yeah. said, but I like that because I don't have like a 4K TV and a PS4 <laughs> Pro or whatever. Yeah. Right? Well, so. you've got two years yeah. to sell enough copies of Hack the Planet to buy that stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then if not... And pay rent. Like, Are you feeling yeah. oppressed yet? Are you feeling oppressed? <laughs> How about now? Would you like to draw your gun? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it, it's been really interesting diving into Cyberpunk 2020, actually, because I, I kind of yeah. had like written it off uh, when I glanced at it before. Yeah. And that essay was really interesting. And then also coming back to it for Veil 2020 mm -hmm. uh, is pretty cool. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot of really good stuff in there. And especially if you read it in comparison to um, Shadowrun, first edition Shadowrun, which I did just recently, it is... Like it is, it is so much better. <laughs> like I love Shadowrun, I played the shit out of it, but um, it's super sparse on. DC. There's so much that it just assumes you know about Cyberpunk and doesn't really go into in a way that yeah. Cyberpunk 2020 really does. Like deeply engage with the material, translate the material, puts its own spin on things, really pushes that like style over substance line. Um, really has a very consistent voice and through line. It really made me want to go back and potentially play it again except that um i i don't yeah. i mean it still takes a long time to play <laughs> yeah well that's that's why i made the veil 2020 yeah. out next month on the first <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i've been play testing it and let me tell you that shit is like it's very fun but it's very like for instance the whole like central <laughs> premise of the of the land of the three thing is that you pick up this woman adriana something young who is a uh, like a lab assistant ostensibly and you're hired to take her to another place and the text is very much concerned with you letting like letting your players know and you know how beautiful this person is mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. conventionally attractive because like i was just like what okay well yeah she's really attractive i get it and then like later on when you're on this flight you like book an airship which by the way is a massive blimp in this setting where they're like this is a luxury liner welcome to the hindenburg <laughs> <That's so weird. laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was it was very funny and uh on it though there's a ninja and they're like well maybe this ninja is talking to adriana because after all she is very attractive <laughs> i'm like wow. what is <laughs> okay <laughs> And no. the ninja's name is like Gunther, and he's like German, and he's a corporate ninja and stuff. And I'm just like, 
okay, well, whatever. Yeah, this is, it, it, we had like a blast, but I was definitely like taking what I needed from it and leaving. <laughs> As you're things. describing this, like it's playing out in my mind, like that airship episode of Archer where they go on the airship to um, to do something, I think, prevent it being blown up or whatever, where it's a blimp and it's all like the Archer characters and blah, blah, oh, blah. Oh, Timeless? Uh, maybe. Wait, no, no, Archer, the TV show. Oh, Archer. The animated, oh. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah, it reminded me of Timeless because the first episode is going back to the Hindenburg, and I was oh, just yeah. like, "Yeah," was, hmm. and they you, you they like recreate it pretty well and all this stuff, yeah. and then you, when they're all like, "Oh yes, you're flying on this luxury cruise to Night City," and <laughs> all no, this my stuff, mind is then, going to a far more like campy and ridiculous place. <laughs> yeah, when like all my players were like, "Okay, well, how long is this ride gonna take?" and I like flip a couple pages, and I'm like, five days." <laughs> they're like are we flying just like a little while i'm like it's luxury i guess luxury. it's just like a little propeller Sl- you know P- S- P- slow P- travel like slow yeah. food yeah <laughs> pretty hilarious and like it, it's just really interesting because um the core rule book which i believe is written by pond smith if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. is so tight mm-hmm. uh, thematically and you can just tell he knew exactly what he was making, what he wanted to say and how to mm-hmm. convey it and to replicate a specific uh, table experience. Whereas the ones not written by him are like far more problematic, Interesting. Uh, but tied to his brand, right? Which right. Mm-hmm. Is, I think what has kind of made everyone assume that Cyberpunk 2020 is more problematic than it is because Mm. the source material is sometimes kind of (laughs) whack. But uh, the actual game, especially if he was actually targeting uh, capitalist tendencies and um, commodifying fashion and art and stuff like that, uh, and then using the humanity cost to to try to like make that substantial and mechanical in the game, Mm -hmm. that's that's, like a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be. And even if he didn't necessarily intend that, like it's still a very very nice like accident i guess <laughs> yeah yeah because like the they talk briefly in the essay about the play experience they got like they yeah. ran that and it was very interesting like one character was a veteran who has low essence and therefore could actually role play not getting along with other people and stuff like that because they had got discharged from the war and uh have like cyber appendages and stuff like that after like actually getting their body blown off and all this stuff and they thought that uh, it really actually helped the narrative a lot because uh, you get the roles where the character is desperately trying to connect with people with empathy and they cannot because mm-hmm. they don't have the, the dice pool for it right like right. they don't get the results and then it's just like uh, facilitating that experience for mm-hmm. the player on the meta level because they're trying to like okay maybe you know, uh, I believe the character's name was Becky. Hopefully, Becky can connect with this person, but mm-hmm. nope, right. not again, right? So, right. It's and the other valid. humanity loss, reflecting empathy, like lack of connection, is actually integrated into the system as well. Like, regardless yeah. of whether you think that's a good way to go, and for some characters, clearly, it it can work for that kind of character that has suffered some kind of trauma. But if you haven't, if you if your cybernetic replacements are sort of divorced from that trauma, then it's like, well, why am I? lacking empathy but it's still connected in a way that's coherent in a way that essence and shadow is not which only matters if you are a magician yeah, or you reach exactly. zero and you die like that's the <laughs> it's just a bar that sits at the side and doesn't have any inter- effect on your interactions with other characters yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. pretty cool so if he takes if he's as uh, like fervent about that 2020 stuff and inserts that into 2070 i could see why people walked away from the demo being like yes yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah i hope we well, get the game that that demo inspired <laughs> in terms yeah, of the reactions same. Yeah. yeah same 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 yeah um so anything else regarding the video or various other things related to it that we've gone over that anybody yeah. wants to bring up i don't think so okay well, I don't see any other questions in the chat, so I think we're probably done for the night. Sounds and this good. one's probably going to be episode one via the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, because this probably is the first completely fine audio, fingers crossed, minus a little bit of roboting, which is totally cool. Um, yeah. 
All right, so... Uh... <laughs> oh, really? Wait, Vitamin, Vitamin says there's going to be a reworked Cyberpunk 2020 called Cyberpunk Red at Origins, if they recall correctly. Origins next year, I guess. Yeah, um, I didn't see. I was like, I didn't see anything. Yeah, this year would be a little. We'll, we'll see. That'll be interesting. That might be an interesting barometer for what they what they're gonna go. We'll keep an eye out for a, some sort of official announcement. If you have a, a link for that, then let us know. You can let me know. He said, segueing smoothly on Twitter, where well, I am at Peregrine Kiwi, uh, or at the Sprawl underscore RPG. Uh, where can uh, they find you all? Fine folks. Kara. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are a person uh, who has an internet personality that people can be got. Whoa, my camera is like <laughs> wigging out here. Got a, got a glitch in the system. Man, they're coming for us. Uh, you, I hope I'm not roboting right now. My nope. No, yeah. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kiranansi. That's probably the easiest way to find me. I hope it came through. Yep, it did. There was a little bit of roboting just after you said there's probably roboting, and I said no. Then there was roboting, of course. But your your Twitter handle came out, uh, Fraser. Good. I'm at uh, Fraser Simons, and uh, I'm also at the Veil uh, RPG as well. But uh, yeah, at pretty much all social media you can find me at Fraser Simons. That's where where I do my speakings to the internets. Cool. Well, we don't have our next uh, we don't have our next chat planned, but we will probably like work out some times. Uh, it won't be in the next couple of weeks because I'm going to Iceland, um, which is going to be Makes awesome. Sense, I might might play a little sagas of the Iceland while under the midnight <laughs> sun. I'm just super looking forward to it. Yes, uh, the land of no sunsets. Yeah. My friend Danielle is there right now, and she at 12 a.m she's like 12 a.m sunset 12 a.m yeah. sunrise <laughs> this is i'm, I'm ready for it i'm like oh yeah let's let's bring it on <laughs> yeah i'm definitely gonna be up at midnight for a picture of me like sunbathing or something that's gotta happen yeah, <laughs> yeah super excited uh but after at any rate uh sometime in july we will be back with another episode uh where we will talk about something interesting that we will decide before then and hopefully it too will have no uh significant audio issues and hopefully we can also get either phil or banana to join us Mm -hmm. um so thanks yes. for uh, joining everyone oh uh, so i see that uh vitamin has posted a link to our telezorian games oh Gen uh, Con christmas oh uh, right yeah mm. red. Uh, red is an updated core book for 2020 which currently is on the schedule for christmas 2018 if you're familiar blah 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 blah, blah. all right well mm. that's interesting um <laughs> Gen Con. Well, you can expect an episode about that, I'm sure, at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and I just posted a review for Blackfish City on consumer uh, consumingcyberpunk.com, so you should check that out. It was a good book. Do you want to send good. me the link, and I will put it in the shoe notes? Sure, yeah, I will cool. do that. The shoe notes. The shoe notes. Yeah. The notes of the shoe. <laughs> the new shoe. All right. Uh, see you later, everybody. Um, yeah. keep your Bye -bye. jacks clean and shit sweet cyber dreams sweet cyber dreams <laughs> don't lose your assets <laughs> hold on to your humanity <laughs>